It's August 3rd, 2005, and another remarkable event is about to be uncovered by Ariel, Rebecca, and Ali, the Retrospectors. So it was on this day that Sony Pictures, owners of Columbia, settled out of court for $1.5 million for having used fake reviews on their film posters. And the litigants, interestingly, weren't a cinema chain or something. They were a group of filmgoers, members of the public, who said they'd felt cheated. And as a result of this decision, the public at large were then entitled to a $5 refund for every ticket they'd bought to any of the movies affected. (laughs) What I thought was really weird about it is that if you look into it, this fictional reviewer was featured on posters for five films. Mm -hmm. And of those five... The one that sparked the lawsuit was by far the best. The two (laughs) cinema goers who initially started it said they felt duped into seeing A Knight's Tale. Now, the other films that this person reviewed were Hollow Man, Vertical Limit, The Forsaken, and a Rob Schneider vehicle called The Animal. I personally (laughs) think they lucked out of those options. Well, they did, but it doesn't make A Knight's Tale like the best movie ever. (laughs) So this whole thing was a ploy by an advertising guy called Matthew Kramer, who worked at Sony Pictures, and he made up, well, he didn't actually make up the name, it was the name of a a friend of his, but he co-opted the name David Manning to put uh, false reviews onto a bunch of pictures, the ones that Rebecca just mentioned, saying that they're pretty great. So the A Knight's Tale uh, review said, this year's hottest new star, describing he Ledger, who was already a bit of a star by then. Yeah, which actually isn't... I mean, you're not saying the film's great, to be fair. I mean, obviously this whole idea was terrible and, like, creating a fake reviewer is obviously going to get you rumbled. I know that it was early internet, but still 2005. You know, the real Dave Manning will at some point stand up. But nonetheless, at least least this review was this year's hottest new star, not you must go and see this movie because it's incredible. That's true, although he did describe the animal, which I haven't seen it, but it does sound like it's probably among the worst of <laughs> the bunch that he used this, this character, David Manning, to, to review as another winner. Well, well, again, the context was the producing team of Big Daddy has delivered another winner. I mean, I think that is damning with faint praise, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> the person who's supposed to see that is like, ah, oh, Big Daddy, the Hamlet of our times. <laughs> He's only gone and knocked another one out of the park. <laughs> Even though, as you say, this was the era of the internet, it was the traditional media that ended up breaking this story. John Horn of Newsweek. It was bad luck, really, for poor old Matthew Kramer because John Horn was already working on a story about critics on movie junkets Mm. and he noticed this person's name coming up. And obviously, you know, the Hollywood critic circle is relatively small and he was suspicious that this previously unknown critic was suddenly getting star billing on these posters. And so he basically... The real mistake Kramer made was using a real newspaper... Right. That, that, that this David Manning was supposed to work for, a small Connecticut-based weekly called the Ridgefield Press, which the best part is the, the way that John Horn broke this story wide open was he gave them a ring yeah. and said, <laughs> who does your film reviews? Do you know this Dave Manning bloke? Yeah, they said, no, they have a father and son team of reviewers called Mark and Jonathan Schumann. Whereas Dave Manning is actually also from Ridgefield. It was another mistake that Matthew <laughs> Kramer made. Not only did he nick the name of his mate, Oops. nick the name of a real newspaper, but he took the mate from the same place as the real newspaper. And Dave Manning from Ridgefield actually sells medical and industrial supplies. So again, <laughs> Not that difficult to put together in a small town. Although real Dave Manning was pretty cool with the whole business of fake Dave Manning having opinions on films. he was. He got to be interviewed on CNN. He must have felt crap about the fact that his friend lost his job, though, as a result of this. If you're interested in the cinematic musings of the real Dave Manning, he was actually asked by the New York Times what he made of The Animal, and he said, not the best movie I've seen. (laughs) <laughs> and if you're interested in the view of Peter Travers from Rolling Stone at the time, he said of the animal, it reeks like something produced from a squatting position. I mean, actually, <laughs> genuinely, I think either of those quotes atop the print run wouldn't have changed the audience that went to see the animal. Like, that, that's <laughs> what they wanted, wasn't it? <laughs> so, I, mean, I think the attribution's quite important. Like, you know, if you read Rolling Stone, you're probably not going to like that film. I mean, I do take that into account myself when i'm looking at a poster like if if it says five stars sunday express i'm like well it's not for me Mm. like i you know but whereas if it says four stars time out then i'm like okay well maybe because there's just this human instinct i think to rely on word of mouth like in itself a poster for a 100 million dollar movie is already telling you Mm. a film studio targeted on making money has employed the cleverest people that they could to give a shot Mm. at this idea and market it to you like you already know Mm. that from the poster 
but it's valuable to have a man's name at the top saying, one hell of a ride, because mm. <laughs> it's supposed to give a sense of impartiality, isn't it? A real response. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's just bizarre that this sort of cockamamie ploy dreamed up by an executive could actually proceed to the point where this fake reviewer is appearing on posters. I mean, Kramer and his boss, who was the senior VP of creative advertising, Josh Goldstein, they were both reprimanded and suspended without pay for 30 days. But also, they're such a large company owned by Sony that actually, if they really wanted to do this and not fall foul of Newsweek's cunning investigative reporting, <laughs> all they needed to do was like create their own blog where they review movies like you know and it's it's owned by sony as well it wouldn't have been that much more expensive and the truth is and this is what john horn was getting at isn't it the truth is that is the kind of thing that happens all the time now you know you see yeah. tv adverts where supposed members of the public are saying how great a film is like they've just come out the foyer and they say it's brilliant but they've all had a free day out haven't they they've been given a nice lunch you know they've come out and they've said oh it's a bit like alien they're not saying it's good <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you should say that Ollie, because it was only a few weeks after this whole scandal broke, Sony was exposed for having used its own employees to pose as those gushing cinema goers in TV ads for The Patriot, <laughs> which is crazy because that film was relatively well reviewed at the time. But I don't mm. know if they were just like drunk on their own influence at this point, but they had a couple of employees pose as like a husband and wife and do a little, <laughs> oh my God, it was so good. It's like you could get anyone to say that if you bung some like free sandwiches out of it. But I can also see why this felt like a natural extension to the people you know, like Kramer and his cohort on the inside of the scam of the sort of press junket thing itself. And, you know, we should unpack that. That's an opportunity for reviewers to go along to usually a pretty plush little private cinema where they're plied with wine and food and drink. And Listen to how he talks in the third person, Rebecca, as if he's never done it. <laughs> <laughs> You've had a canapé, haven't you? I hear that this is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that whole business is going on behind the scenes of people being literally wined and dined and often then introduced to the stars and slightly flattered. And so you could imagine why the marketing team would think, well, you know, we're sort of getting away with the rest of this PR stuff. Let's cut out the middleman. Just don't need a real person. <laughs> yeah. We'll drink the booze and we'll create a fake person. <laughs> Canapes for everyone. That sense that the whole industry is already so phony plays into what I think is the personal highlight of this incident. So this lawsuit was brought against Sony and they tried to appeal to like have it shot down. And a panel of three judges voted to let the lawsuit proceed. And that's when they decided to settle out of court. But the dissenting judge who didn't want the lawsuit to go ahead, a guy called Ruben Ortega, wrote such a scathing put down of the whole thing, which he called the most frivolous case with which I have ever had to deal. And his quote <laughs> from, his, from his dissent is amazing. He says... Imagine the great contribution this case will make to our quality of life and justice in America. Why, it may eventually protect us all from war, pestilence, famine and death. A new day will dawn from which time no one will ever again be fooled by a promotion touting a movie as the greatest artistic accomplishment of the ages. Dave Manning, The Ridgefield Press. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also an example of stuff that kind of goes on in the selective quoting of reviews. And I remember it, there was a famous case where the ads had to be amended to reflect, like properly reflect what the viewer's intention with their wording was. Yes, yeah, so it's like when someone writes an incredible flop and it just comes out as incredible, The Guardian. Yeah. <laughs> well, the one that I can't remember the exact play that this was connected to, but the quote that had been used in the review was if your train leaves before the end of this incredibly long play don't miss it and what they'd chosen <laughs> to take out of it was don't miss it wow <laughs> tomorrow we're going to insist that every town has stocks because people are demanding higher pay ditch the ads and get a Sunday episode when you join Club Retrospectors Patreon.com slash Retrospectors.